So we just talked about the malonic ester synthesis and the acetoacetic ester synthesis. And both of those are very useful because they're, uh, they're acidic carbonyls. And so we don't require a base that's so strong. We can get away with alkoxide bases. But if we want to alkylate a normal carbonyl, one that, that doesn't have that 1,3-dark carbonyl situation, we're going to require a base that's much stronger. We're going to require something like LDA. Okay, so if we want to uh, alkylate, for example, um, a ketone like cyclohexanone directly, uh, we have to first enolize with that very strong base. So LDA, and typically this is going to be in something like THF, and uh, usually but not, all, not always, uh, we'll talk about this, uh, we're going to be at minus 78 for the uh, enolization. So that's going to allow us to access... Uh, these these types of uh, enolates and then at this point we can throw in uh, an alkylating agent and then expect to actually alkylate uh, in that alpha position so we can absolutely do this um, it's just a bit more technically involved because we have to generate this much stronger base uh, which itself requires a butyl lithium which is flammable um, and the whole process is a bit more expensive, um, but there are certainly reasons to, to do this chemistry, um, and so it, it does, it, it is very important. So this would be for ketones, the same thing would work for esters. So for example, if I had ethyl acetate, um, again, not very acidic, so I'm going to need, um, you know, the, the LDA or something equally strong to deprotonate, so LDA followed by, let's say, butyl iodide. And if I do this, I would get to do this product, right? So one, two, three, four, and there's my fifth carbon, which is right there, okay? <clears throat> now, one of the beauties of this process, um, or, uh, you know, one of the, the implications, I suppose, is that um, we're analyzing in one discrete step and then we're throwing in an alkylating agent. So for the most part, we don't expect overalkylation to happen. Um, that's not globally true, but if we do things at um, reasonably low temperatures, um, we're not going to uh, to get any overalkylation. Okay, so that's an ester. So let's say this ketones can be done, esters can be done, cyclic esters, which are called lactones. We could certainly think about doing these. So here's an example of a cyclic, lac, uh, a cyclic ester, a lactone. So here's LDA and benzyl bromide. And certainly we would expect, we would expect to get that product. Um, nitriles, right? We can analyze nitriles as well. Uh, also, not acidic enough for um, alkoxide, and there would also be side reactions. Um, but if we just treat a nitrile with LDA, we can we can pull off one of these alpha protons here, right? So this acts just like a carboxylic acid derivative, remember? And so we're going to get to, uh, an, we'll call it an enolate. Um, it's, it's different because it doesn't involve uh, oxygen, it involves nitrogen instead. So this would be the the carbon-based resonance form, um, and if we thought about what the uh, you know the more appropriate resonance form would be, we would just push those electrons up onto the nitrogen. So this is the 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 resonance form of an of a nitrile enolate, okay, um, where we have the negative charge on a nitrogen. Um, but this is you know going to function in the same way. So when we when we throw in, let's say we throw in methyl iodide, okay. Uh, we would have methyl iodide here, these electrons would push down, and then that would kick off the iodide, right? So that's how that happens, and then in this case, we would alkylate at that alpha position. So LDA allows us to do that type of um, alkylation as well. Okay, you know, you can do amides as well. It's not so typical. Amid enolates aren't, aren't so easy to work with, and so we usually don't see that type of chemistry. But if you were going to try to enolize 
on AMID, uh, you would certainly want to use LDA or something similarly strong. Now, aldehydes, what about aldehydes? Well, these don't really work out that well. Um, it really doesn't work out to, to use um, strong bases to, to analyze aldehydes. And with LDA specifically, one of the problems um, is that Right, so we talked about how, how LDA is this um, hindered base, and it's hindered, which makes, makes it so that it won't react with an ester or, or do something like that. But an aldehyde is really reactive, and it's not that hindered because it only just has this you know, hydrogen substituent. So one of the things that LDA will do is actually add to an aldehyde carbonyl. And so you'll end up with this intermediate. Right, so this forms in situ in the flask, and then this isn't this can't do anything really uh or or it doesn't really do anything um and so then when you work it up when you work it up with water and acid you just get the aldehyde back okay so that's what usually happens when you're trying to if you try to analyze an aldehyde it just doesn't work um, and in fact that's actually been used as a in situ protecting strategy where you can if you have an aldehyde and then something else you want to analyze you can add lda it'll trap the aldehyde as this type of thing um, and then and then you can analyze the other carbonyl and then when you work it all up you get your aldehyde back So that's kind of a clever strategy um, But it means that you can't you basically can't uh, analyze an aldehyde in, in that same way There are other ways to do aldehyde chemistry and we'll we'll touch on that in a bit, but um, But enolate uh, chemistry is, is really not uh, the way to do that Okay, there's one issue that we want to talk about in terms of ketone enolate formation, okay? So the actual alkylation of the enolate, you know, we've talked about that. There's nothing special about it. It's just a, an SN2 process. But the enolate formation, um, you know, has some specifics here that we need to talk about. And specifically, let us consider this ketone. Okay, so it's methyl cyclohexanone. If you know, notice, um, we could enolize at that position, right? That's got two protons there, but there's also an acidic proton right there. So we've got this potential to enolize in either of two positions, okay? Two possible enolates that could form, okay? And, you know, that's at least, you know, in theory presents a problem because we have a selectivity issue. And in chemistry, in synthetic chemistry, selectivity is the name of the game. You want to form one thing, the thing that you want to form, and you don't want to form anything else um, because that just leads to separation issues or uh, diminished yields, okay? So what's going to happen? Well, we can, we can use certain strategies that will help us select for one or the other. Now let's start with this position here. So this position one, we'll call this position two. Position one is the easy one because it's the least hindered. And I, as I think you understand, usually accessing the least hindered position is kinetically more favorable. It's just the thing that tends to happen faster. So if we play our cards right here, we're gonna do LDA and we're gonna keep this temperature really nice and low, minus 78 degrees Celsius or, or sometimes even lower than that. Um, and we're using LDA, remember, which is a nice hindered base. We could even do things that were more hindered if we needed to. Well, if we do that, and if we keep the temperature low, we can expect a pretty high selectivity for this enolate. Okay, so we can just we can essentially call this only. Um, there might be some of the of the minor enolate, but not enough to really bother us that much. And so then, wherever we formed our enolate, uh, that's where it's gonna get alkylated. So in this case, if we threw in methyl iodide, we would then get this product out, okay? So this is the easy one, and we can pretty much expect to get a good selectivity of this one, okay? Now, one of the keys here is, so you need to have a slight excess of LDA, okay? What you want to do is deprotonate every single molecule of ketone and keep it cold. So excess LDA, keep it cold. 
if you were to uh, if you were to deprotonate, let's say 98% of your ketone with 2% left over, 2% undeprotonated ketone, your molecule of enolate would see the undeprotonated ketone and exchange the proton, right? So it just exchange the proton uh, and giving you, uh, you know, the enolate of the thing that hadn't been enolized and the ketone of the thing that was. And this is just an exchange process. But anytime you start to exchange things, you're heading towards thermodynamics, okay? So you're no longer in a kinetic regime, you're heading towards thermodynamics, which means that you're going to start to um, access the more stable isomer, okay? And that's what we don't want if we're getting to this enolate. This is the kinetic enolate. Kinetic because it's the one that forms more quickly, okay? Now, on the other hand, if we want the other one, we can do that and we just have to basically allow thermodynamics to take over. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, if we want to get the other enolate, is we're gonna take the same substrate here and we're gonna do just the opposite of what we recommended before. We're gonna throw in um, now a slight, um, uh, slightly less than one equivalent of LDA, right? So we're actually gonna help this exchange by not deprotonating all of it. And then we would we'll probably start this out at minus 70 degrees, but then we're gonna let it warm up to room temperature and heat is just gonna allow that exchange to happen, okay? So when we do that then, we're going to get to the enolate that's more substituted, okay? Certainly not the kinetic, but it is thermodynamically more stable. And, and how do you know that? Well, if you remember back to uh, when you learned about alkenes, the more substituted an alkene, the more stable it is. Um, and, and basically, sp2 centers are inherently slightly electron deficient. So the more alkyl groups you can put on them, that makes them happier, okay? Enolates are the same way. They're, they're still alkenes. They just happen to have an O- minus on them. So the more substituted an enolate is, the more stable it is. And so this is going to be the thermodynamically more stable enolate. Um, and the problem here, okay, is that uh, there's going to be some ratio that's defined by the relative stabilities of the two enolates. And in this specific case, the relative stabilities is about 90 to 10, okay? 90% of this with 10% of the, of the kinetic enolate, the, the other one that we, that we just talked about, okay, this one up here. So 90 to 10 ratio. And the problem is with kinetics, you can affect that. You can change, you can cool it down, you can have a bigger base, um, you can play all these tricks. With thermodynamics, you're screwed, okay? Whatever the energy is, that's what it is. And you can't really affect that, okay? Um, or at least at least not with, uh, not with relying on the differences of the energies of the two systems, okay? So, in this case, we're stuck with 90 to 10. And so if in this case we throw in uh, methyl iodide, all right, that's great. We are going to get to this uh, alkylation product where, where we've got the two methyl groups on the same carbon. But the problem is, is that this is only gonna be about 90% of that product. And the other 10% is going to be this product, this one with the that came from the kinetic enolate. So in this case, we're definitely gonna to have to separate them. Um, so yeah, it's good, but you know, it's, it's maybe, maybe not awesome. So if there was another way to get at this product, um, you know, a, a synthetic chemist might, uh, might certainly consider doing that. Okay, so that's basically how we can alkylate uh, carbonyls. We're either going to have an acidic compound like a malinate or an acetoacetic uh, ester, and in that case, we're going to use the alkoxide bases with the decarboxylation. Or if we're doing just a normal carbonyl, we're going to have to bring in the, the much stronger base. Um, and LDA is the one that we're going to learn about. There are others. Um, and in that case, uh, we, can, we can do pretty standard alkylations. The case that we have to be concerned with, though, is ketones when there's the potential for two different um, enolizations. Um, but as you can see now, we have the potential to select between either kinetic or thermodynamic enolates.